this thing is 10 out of 10 across the board because it is so calm, so smooth, sounds so nice. I cannot get enough of that sound. And I have been lucky enough to drive basically every great EV on the market. I've driven all the Teslas, I've driven all of Porsche's electric cars, every flavor of the Taycan, the Macan Electric, even Porsche's GT4 ePerformance driven the Audi R8 e-tron Quattro, Mercedes-Benz EQS, the EQE, the SUVs, the sedans, the AMGs. I've even driven every flavor of Lucid Air, including the Sapphire, and I've driven the Rimac Navara. Now, I'm not telling you this to brag, although I am pretty proud of all that. I'm telling you this because of all those amazing cars that I just listed, this is my favorite EV on the planet. It's the Rolls-Royce Spectre, and if you come with me, I'm going to tell you what makes this car so incredibly special. It's all very civilized to start. The problem with a suicide door is that it can be kind of hard to reach, but just put your foot in the brake pedal and the door closes itself. Things do go downhill a little bit from there, though, because I had to reach up and hit the engine start-stop button, and that's, well, I get a nice fanfare. That's great. But why do I have to hit a button? This thing knows exactly when I'm in the seat and when I'm not, so can it just figure that out on its own? Why do I have to push a button? But anyway, I can get over that. We're going to get in motion now, and you're going to hear what is probably my favorite thing about this car, and that is the noise that it makes. I'm going to be real quiet for a second here. You hear that sound? It is something special, I think. Something very simple and very basic, but also quite complex, like a fine wine, this sound. It is the noise that this car makes when you put your foot on the accelerator. Of course, EVs don't make a lot of noise, and this one in particular makes very little noise. And so a lot of manufacturers have resorted to a lot of different ways to add some kind of an acoustic feedback to the driving experience to make up for the fact that there isn't a big V12 or V8 or V whatever underneath the hood anymore. But the sound that this car makes is unlike any other EV on the market, unlike anything else on the planet. Honestly, it sounds otherworldly. It sounds like there's some alien orchestra hovering just above the car, chanting from another dimension. And it is so amazing. I love that sound. When you just put your foot on the accelerator a little bit, it goes along with the acceleration and just creates this acoustic soundscape that is really, really nice. Now, when you get a little bit harder on the accelerator, there's a little bit more complexity to it than there is normally, but even when you're just wafting along, which is the best way to drive this car, just get that very subtle augmentation, which to me sounds amazing. Now, that is facilitated in part by the fact that this is far and away the quietest EV that I have ever driven in. I'm going along at about 45 miles an hour right now. There's just a hint of wind noise off of the mirror to my side. But it goes well beyond the fact that Rolls-Royce engineers have isolated me from the outside. Even the things happening here in the cabin are incredibly silent and smooth and quiet as well. Normally when you're filming a video like this, we have to turn off the HVAC controls, the air conditioning and everything else, because the sound of the fans can be quite distracting from an audio perspective. You don't want to be muddying up the audio, which is why if you look at videos that I've filmed on a hot day, I've often got a little bit of sweat on the forehead because we've had to turn the AC off and I've got a little bit of uh, global warming happening in the car. But with this one, I can leave the HVAC on because it is so incredibly quiet. I've got it on soft, which is the kind of low, medium speed right now. But if I turn it all the way up to high, just the tiniest little bit of fan noise. You hear it? I can just barely hear it myself. That is remarkable. I've never been in a car with that level of detail, with that level of attention spent on making everything peaceful, calm, and quiet, and beautiful. Even the vents are special. They're made of metal, like basically everything else that you see in here that looks like metal. They make a great sound when you touch them. They feel nice and cool and wonderful in the hand. The little bellows that you push and pull to articulate them, to actuate them, also have a beautiful weight to them. It's just, the attention to detail in this car is truly mind-blowing. And that continues from the fit and finish of the interior, the feel of the rotary knob here in the middle, the volume knob. Everything just looks and feels as great as you think that it would based on what this car costs. How much does this car cost? I'll tell you in a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Now that smoothness, that quietness, of course, continues in the driving character itself. Again, as I mentioned, this is really a car that I think is best driven when you're just wafting along. 
and the tuning, the characteristics of the car are definitely designed to match that as well. The throttle, for example, there's a lot of power underneath the hood, or the hood, the front and rear motors in this car, that give it really good acceleration. I'll accelerate again quickly here, and it surges forward quite nicely. But to get that throttle, you really need to go very deep into the throttle. The throttle curve, which is basically how much actual acceleration you get for how far you're pushing on, on the pedal, it's quite flat, and it cuts up quite sharply at the end which means you can go fairly deep into the throttle without getting a lot of acceleration, which makes it very easy to be nice and smooth. And there's actually a nice amount of regen built in as well. To turn that on, right now if I take off my foot off the accelerator, it just coasts calmly, smoothly. If I want regen, I tap the B on the shifter here, and now it begins to give me a fair bit of acceleration. And this will actually come to a full stop, so this is an actual one pedal mode, but again, the acceleration or the reverse acceleration, basically the application of that region is very smooth, very quiet. And so if you have passengers who normally want you to turn off or turn down the region because they have sensitive stomachs, that shouldn't be an issue here. The steering is also light and there's not a lot of feedback in here. It's also a fairly slow ratio, which does make it a little bit of a handful if you're driving it uh, aggressively through the corners. But again, that just makes for a nice and smooth experience. Same with the brake pedal, a long, soft throw. The brakes are quite comprehensive when you get all the way down there, but you've got to dig in pretty deep to get them to bite. And that's, again, perfect in keeping with the character of this car. Other niceties include one of the most comprehensive seat massages I've ever experienced in a car, which not only will do your back, but also continues down to your um, rear end. And that may sound a little gimmicky, and in some ways I suppose it is, but actually on a long drive, which you would want to do in this car because it's so comfortable, that can actually be quite nice to have a little bit of motion added to your hips from the massaging down low. Just a little bit of articulation there can help with lower back pain and keep things moving when you've been in the seat for a long time. And you can stay in the seat for quite a long time in this car too. How long? Well, the Spectre is officially EPA rated for 266 miles of range, which won't win it any awards for longevity, but consider your average Rolls owner is probably going to take their private jet anywhere that's more than a couple of hours away. And you can see that really isn't much of a concern. More important is the power, and there's plenty of that here. 577 horsepower to be exact, which puts it right on par with the twin-turbo V12 that drives Rolls-Royce's most powerful internal combustion cars of the moment. That comes from a pair of electric motors powered by a 102 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, all of that is made possible thanks to the fact that underneath the skin, when you dig down deep enough, this is basically a BMW. Shh. Yeah, I know. You would almost never know it except from the software, which looks very BMW-like. And some people will detract from this car by saying that it is basically a dressed-up BMW. But in my eye, that partnership is actually quite good because, frankly, I don't think Rolls-Royce would have been able to pull off this car without that BMW partnership. You know, developing your own engine is very complicated, but developing your own motor and controller and inverter and battery packs, those are incredibly difficult as well. And while, yes, you can buy a lot of that stuff off the shelf these days, tying it all together in such a cohesive and beautiful way with all the controlling solder that you need and all the polish that you need as well, that is a very difficult thing. And so for Rolls-Royce to have something to start with, to build upon, to create something like this, that is absolutely necessary. Because even though the profit margins on this car must be extremely high, Rolls-Royce is an extremely low-volume manufacturer. And so, honestly, I don't think they could have pulled this car off without that BMW partnership. And I'm so very glad they did because, again, I absolutely love this car. Now, I'm going to stop here just to say something very quickly, which is to say, Rolls-Royce is not paying me anything for this, just in case anybody's worrying about that. I know there's a lot of uncertainty with some creators online about who's paying their paychecks. This is absolutely a car that Rolls-Royce did give me for a loan for a week but they're not paying me any financial incentive. I'm free to say whatever the heck I want to. There's no sponsorship involved here. This is just me sharing my opinion of this car after a week of driving it. I'm paying for the electricity. I'm paying for every other cost involved with producing this video. This is purely on me, and this is my honest opinion of how great this car really, really is. Now, not only am I thrilled with this car, and not only am I very glad that it exists, but I'm of the opinion that this is perhaps the greatest Rolls-Royce of all time. Yes, there are more iconic Rolls-Royces, but in terms of a combination of poise and presence, driving dynamic, and ultimately overall vibe, 
this thing is 10 out of 10 across the board because it is so calm, so smooth, sounds so nice. I cannot get enough of that sound. And it just is the absolute complete package. It's quick enough when you want it to be. It handles reasonably well. But I think this car is really, really great at just easing you home at the end of a stressful day. I could only imagine how great it would be at the end of a really long stressful day when your nerves are completely tattered, when you just want to shout at the world. It would be so incredible to sit in this car and just waft your way home. And I can't imagine anybody not being in a particularly amazing mood by the time they got back and got out of this car. Of course, the bummer would be you'd have to get out of the car, but so it goes. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, do EVs really fit in with the Rolls-Royce lifestyle? And I think that they absolutely do. I think a lot of people would wonder to start with, well, is a Rolls-Royce owner really gonna go sit in the back of a dingy parking lot outside of a Walmart to plug in their Spectre? That's not really posh, is it? No, of course, but they're not gonna do that because they're all gonna just charge it at home. You're never gonna see a Rolls-Royce owner on the phone with Electrify America customer service because their charger won't work. Because again, they're gonna park it at home in their 14-bay garage next to their Lamborghini and their Ferrari and their Bentley and everything else. And they're gonna charge it home and it's always gonna be perfectly charged and ready for them when they want it. So that piece of the equation, that doesn't really factor into the ownership experience here. The ownership experience for a car like this is very different than someone who's buying like an Ionic 5 or Ionic 6 or any of those cars. And so a lot of the things that we need to think about on a day-to-day practicality basis when we're talking about EV adoption, things like that, just frankly don't apply to this car, which means that we can really just focus on the EV-related attributes that are brought to a car like this. If you've ever been lucky enough to go to a Concours event, I've been to Dawn Patrol at Pebble Beach many times, and it's always amazing to see the Rolls Royces pull on the lawn because they're so quiet and smooth. But then when you open the hood on them, you can see these amazing mazes of exhaust and pipe work to enable the big motors that are driving those things to operate in such a smooth and quiet way. Of course, all that is gone in this car. This car is inherently quiet. They can just build on that and create, again, this machine that achieves, to me, a new level of greatness when it comes to EVs. How much is that going to cost? Well, why don't I cut to VO so that I can run down all the options of the packages just to let you know. We'll pull up the Monroney here for the 2024 Rolls-Royce Spectre, which as you can see starts at $420,000, but nobody pays MSRP for a Rolls-Royce. You gotta add more options on top of that, starting with the $22,400 Spectre package, which gives you those decadent lambswool floor mats and some other niceties too. $13,000 for that distinctive chartreuse exterior color, $10,600 for the wheels, $4,700 for the clock on the inside, $13,000 for starlight doors, $1,300 for the ventilated steering wheel spokes, and other things like $11,000 for that amazing bespoke audio system, and $1,775 for the umbrella canopy color in black. Total price after a $2,700 destination, $560,100. So yeah, that's a lot, and it's certainly outside of the realm of my affordability. When I park this thing in my garage at home, the value of my house more than doubles. So just to give you perspective, I will never own a car like this. But to me, again, of all the great EVs I've driven, this is the greatest. Because while I've gone incredibly quickly in some incredibly fast and engaging EVs, I've been pampered in many great EVs over the years. I've had some amazing road trip experiences in EVs. I've driven in some beautiful places in EVs. But this is the only one that makes me feel like a million bucks even when I'm going five miles an hour under the speed limit, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. At any speed, in any conditions, this car makes you feel spectacular. And that is a very special thing, and that makes this a very special car. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments what do you think about the Rolls-Royce Spectre. Likes and subscriptions are very appreciated. And if you want, check out this video of me sliding around a $200,000 Mercedes-Benz SUV in the mud.